In Inside the Third Reich, Albert Speer writes, I was called to the Ober Salzburg with my sketches. Waiting in the anteroom at the Birkhoff, pale and agitated, were Leitgen and Pinch, two of Hesse's adjutants. They asked if I would let them see Hitler first. They had a personal letter from Hess to transmit to him. At this moment, Hitler descended from his room upstairs. One of the adjutants was called into the salon. While I began leafing through my sketches once more, I suddenly heard an inarticulate, almost animal cry. Then Hitler roared, Bormann at once! Where is Bormann? Bormann was told to get in touch with Goering, Ribbentrop, Goebbels and Himmler by the fastest means possible. All private guests were confined to the upper floor. Many hours passed before we learned what had happened. Hitler's deputy had flown to hostile England. The two adjutants were arrested, as the harbingers of bad news used to be at the courts of ancient despots. That is taken from Albert Speer's Inside the Third Reich. I know that there are problems with Inside the Third Reich, however, as Speer had no reason to change the facts here, I am assuming that this is correct. Of course, I am also assuming that Hitler went berserk when he found out that Hess had flown to the United Kingdom, and thus, logically, he didn't know about it. However, it does of course need to be pointed out that there are contrary views. Hitler's valet, Heinz Linger, said after the war, I didn't dare ask him whether he knew about Hess's flight to the United Kingdom, but his behaviour told me that not only did he know about it in advance, but that he probably even sent Hess there. Both Ernst Wilhelm Böhler, the head of the Nazi Party's foreign organisation, and Hermann Goering's adjutant, Karl Heinz Bodenschatz, who were staying at the Ober Salzburg at the time when Hitler received the news about Hess's flight, also expressed the opinion that Hitler knew about the flight. So did Hitler know or didn't he know? Well, there was one person that really did suffer the consequences and that was Friedrich Alexander Karl Heinz Pinch and this video is going to talk about him. He was one of the Hess adjutants that broke the news to Hitler and who was arrested for being the bearer of bad news. This bad news was to have a very negative consequence on his life. Pinch was born on the 3rd of June 1909 in Rixdorf, which is today part of Berlin. He was an early member of the Nazi party, joining as a teenager in the 1920s. On the 4th of July 1913, Pinch married Anna Charlotte Fitzner, who was born on the 29th of August 1909 in Beuten, today Bitum in Poland. Shortly after the Nazi seizure of power, Rudolf Hess chose him to be his personal adjutant. This post came about with the SS rank of Sturmbahnführer, the equivalent of Major. Hess was in theory Hitler's number two, the deputy leader of the Nazi party. He'd been with Hitler since the early days in Munich. They'd served time together in Landsberg prison. It was Hitler who sat Hess and his future wife down and suggested that the two get married. Alfred Leitken, who was the second adjutant of Rudolf Hess, stated in 1952 correspondence with the Institute for Contemporary History in Munich that the sole ambition of Hess was to be the truthful and faithful interpreter of their wishes of Hitler. Nothing else. He had no wish to be leader. However, Hess was being brushed aside by Hitler who complained to others that Hess just left him with a headache. Hess was clearly not a party to the plans for World War II and appears to have felt left out of things. In order to get back into the centre of Hitler's life, he decided to take it upon himself to fly to the United Kingdom in order to meet with people he'd met in Berlin during the 1936 Olympic Games in order to work out a peace treaty. Given that the United Kingdom had already refused two offers from Hitler, it's hard to know what Hess was thinking, but psychology and psychiatry is outside the scope of this video. Hess chose to fly off anyway. Pinch had enjoyed a very high position in the Third Reich and the prestige that it offered. He was also very much in the confidence of Rudolf Hess. From October 1940, Hess began training flights, mostly on Saturday morning, in a BF-110 fighter plane under Messerschmitt's chief test pilot, Wilhelm Storr. As his adjutant, Pinch would accompany him there. 
On the 10th of January 1941, Karl Heinz Pinch draws as usual to Messerschmitt's factory airfield at Augsburg. But this time, before climbing up into the ME110, Hess handed Pinch two envelopes, a letter addressed to Hitler and sealed instructions to be opened in four hours' time if he hadn't returned by then. After two hours flying, the weather deteriorated and Hess aborted the mission and returned to Augsburg. Although the four hours were not yet up, Pinch opened the instructions. Thus, he learned that Hess intended to fly to the United Kingdom. Hess thus told Pinch what his plans were to end the war. Pinch, however, was not the only one who knew of the plans. Laura Schrödel, the secretary of Hess, had typed the letters. Sometime in January 1941, Pinch had told Max Hofweber, the deputy Führer's First World War comrade. Hofweber told Hess's mentor, Professor Haushofer, who then arranged to see Hess. In order to protect his source, Haushofer told Hess a story about how he'd had a dream in which Hess was in the United Kingdom, aiming to get a confession out of Hess, but Hess told him nothing more, and no doubt thought that this was proof of the righteousness of his mission. On Saturday the 10th of May 1941, Rudolf Hess said goodbye to his wife Ilse without any explanations. She thought that he was going to be away for some time, but... Perhaps she didn't think she wasn't going to see him for as so long as she didn't see him for. Hess left in a Mercedes-Benz SSK with Karl Heinz Pinch, his manservant Josef Palzer and his bodyguard Franz Lutz. They headed to Houndstetten Airfield, stopping somewhere on the route for a quick stroll in the countryside. Once more, Hess handed Pinch the letters that needed to be delivered to Hitler before flying off bound for the UK. This photograph was taken by Pinch showing Hess about to fly off the UK. Whereas it is true that this photograph was taken before a flight to the United Kingdom, it was not this flight. This photograph was taken before the first flight, the second time Hess considered it bad luck to have his picture taken and so asked Pinch not to bother. Around 21.45, Pinch noted that as no message had come through, then everything must have gone according to plan. He planned the trip to see Hitler for the following day. If he'd known what the next 14 years were to bring, then he might have wished that he'd gone with Hess to the United Kingdom. Pinch and Leitgen then made the trip to Obersalzburg by train with the message for Hitler. Asking Speer to wait, the message was delivered and Hitler called for Bormann, who in turn had Pinch and Leitgen arrested. On the 12th of May 1941, both Pinch and Leitgen were kicked out of the Nazi party on Bormann's instructions. Under interrogation, Pinch informed the Gestapo about what he knew of the history, preparations and purpose of Hess's flight. Then both he and Leitgen were sent to Sachsenhausen concentration camp. They were not the only members of the Hess entourage to be imprisoned. The same fate awaited his secretary, Laura Schrödel, his manservant, Josef Platzer, his bodyguard and private detective, criminal commissar Franz Lutz and other staff members, Rudi Lippert, Gunter Soroff and Ernst Schulter Strathaus, the latter being over 60 years old. Martin Bormann wanted the People's Court to try them, but on the 27th of July 1941, Himmler's chief of staff, SS Obergruppenführer Karl Wolf, noted that Bormann had ruled that there was to be no trial until Hitler himself made a decision on what to do with them. On the 14th of May 1941, four days after the flight, Goebbels wrote in his diary, to Einring by plane, from there by car to the Obersalzburg, work at full stretch during the journey, the Führer is waiting for me. I read the letter that Hess left behind for the Führer, totally confused, schoolboy amateurism saying they intended to go to England, make the hopelessness of the position clear to them, bring down Churchill's governments with the aid of Lord Hamilton in Scotland and then make a peace which would save London's face. Goebbels' confusion was clearly shared by everyone else. What was Hess up to? Hess in British captivity found out that what had happened to Princh and wrote a letter to say how sorry he was that had been the cause of this misfortune to his loyal adjutant. The problem for those who that did know of the secret mission was if this was an order from Hitler or not, and if so, then they were duty-bound to keep the secret. Pinch may have considered telling Bormann but if this were a Führer order, on a need-to-know basis, 
then Borman didn't need to know, so therefore he didn't tell him. In 1944, Pinch was released from Sachsenhausen and went into the Wehrmacht. He was quickly promoted to lieutenant. However, he was captured and as a Soviet prisoner of war was handed over to the Soviet intelligence agency, the NKVD, for questioning. He was tortured, so much so that he was unable to use cutlery to eat. The results of this torture came out in 2010. A 28-page notebook from 1948 was discovered in the Moscow Special Archives by Matthias Uhl of the German Historical Institute in Moscow. It was written by Pinch. The notebook claimed that Hitler knew all about Hess's flight plans in advance. According to an interrogation transcript from that time, Pinch is said to have claimed that Hitler reacted calmly after reading Hess's letter. Hitler calmly listened to my report and dismissed me without comment, Pinch wrote. The Führer had known all about Hess's flight for a while, the adjutant claimed in this report, because Berlin had also been negotiating with London for some time. The flight, Pinch writes, occurred by prior arrangement with the British. Hess's mission, he adds, was to use all the means at his disposal to achieve, if not a German military alliance with the United Kingdom against the Soviet Union, at least the neutralisation of Britain. Copies of his statements were sent to Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov and Laurenti Beria, who was head of the NKVD. Pinch used vocabulary commonly found in Soviet propaganda which suggests that this was dictated to him whilst he could still write, or after his wounds from the torture had healed. The Cold War had already begun and Pinch stated that the reason he wanted to go public with this information at this particular time was that reactionary circles in the United Kingdom and America are striving to unleash a war. The adjutant statement ends with the words, The facts I am reporting confirm that the United Kingdom, by promoting Hitler's aggression against Soviet Russia, acted in accordance with its old principle of using foreign hands to remove the chestnuts from the fire. This language is classic communist speak. However, we do know that this is not true. What is clear is that the NKVD wished to recreate the past to suit its agenda the same way as the current Russian regime seeks to change history to suit its goals. The version of history that the NKVD sought to create was one where the Western allies wanted an alliance with Hitler, of course forgetting that it was the Soviet Union's own alliance with Hitler that started the war in the first place. Pinch was tortured, so we can't blame him for anything he wrote whilst in NKVD captivity, and the torture shows that he didn't do this voluntarily. I would suggest that in order not to have a second round, he did what his torturers wanted. And who would have done differently? The Soviet Union held on to its Axis prisoners of war as long as possible. It held on to the high value prisoners the longest. One of those high value prisoners was pinched, required as were others from Hitler's former entourage and others in its falsification of history. However, Pinch was freed. On the 16th of December 1955, his release came with the following story from the Associated Press. Karl Heinz Pinch, 46 year old former adjutant of Deputy Fuhrer Rudolf Hess, was freed today after 14 years in Nazi and Russian captivity. Pinch, a former colonel of the brown shirted Nazi stormtroopers, arrived at this West German reception centre in a transport of 600 repatriates from Russia. He told reporters he helped Hess plan his sensational peace mission flight to England in 1941. 
He said he personally reported Hess's flight to Adolf Hitler at the Führer's Obersalzburg Mountain Forest Retreat on the 11th of May 1941 and gave him a memorandum in which Hess outlined his plans. Pinch said he had a heated discussion with the Führer. At this time it's madness to make peace with England, he quoted Hitler as telling him. He added, however, he thought Hitler secretly wanted peace with Britain. Pinch said Hess was the most decent of all Nazi leaders. He said he could not imagine Hess was mentally unstable when they flew to England. He described Martin Bormann, Hitler's private secretary, who was condemned to death and absentee at the Nuremberg trials as the grave digger of the German people. Bormann ordered him put into a concentration camp after his meeting with Hitler, Pinch said. After his release from Soviet captivity in 1955, he went to live in Munich. In 1965, he was interviewed by a British journalist. Then he said that Hess told him just before he left that the Führer doesn't know. Pinch didn't talk much about his previous life either in the service of the Nazis or in Soviet captivity. However, the second Hess adjutant, Alfred Leitgen, did talk a lot about his experiences. He was a witness at Nuremberg and he happily talked to the Institute for Contemporary History in Munich, which holds a large file of his recollections and which I will deal with in another video. So thanks very much for listening. I hope you found that interesting. I upload every Friday at 2000 hours my time. I'm based in Germany and in Poland. I also upload on other days as well. And so if you want to know what other days I'm uploading on, then please subscribe. And that way you'll know when I'm doing other things outside of the regular Friday 2000 hours slot. But for the moment, all the best from me and bye for now.